Hello, people. I am back for another video. I am reviewing a movie my friend Steve recommended me called Ironclad, and I'm happy he recommended this to me. This was a really good movie. This is, yeah, it's a little low budget. Like, there are some shots in the movie where you can clearly tell it's like a green screen, but the movie itself is really good. And well cast, you have Brian, um, Brian Cox, um, you have, uh, Charles Dance, who, Charles Dance was so good in this movie. Um, Paul Giamatti as King John the Vil He was, that scene, dude. The back and forth between him and William before he had William killed was some of the most savage shit. And then, the, this movie is really, I will say this, be warned. I mean, unless you, obviously, unless you like love violence in movies, but. If you're a little squeamish, yeah, you're gonna be squeamish. The, the violence, they don't hold back on the violence. There's like one scene. I think it was William. When he was killing a dude, he used like an axe. No, it was an axe, a sword. A sword to a dude's face, and you see it like chop through his face. Like, they don't hold back on some of the violence. Even um, William's death, William, which that's Brian Cox's character. Um, but basically, the movie is about the siege of Rochester. I could be Rochester, Jesus. Rochester Castle, um, and um, then mentioned the Magna Carta, so it's a little bit of, like, obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a movie, so I, some things are embellished, but I do like some historical stuff in there, but I, I love this movie. I think it's fun, it's, a uh, the score is there, you have some really strong performances, I think they nail, because one thing, I was saying this during the movie, Medieval times were very, like, raw and violent. And I think this movie really captures... I mean, the beginning of the movie, when um the Knights of Templar arrive, and I mean, our main character pretty much is uh, Thomas, um, who I think he's a pretty fun character, Thomas Marshall, who initially, you know, swears us a vow of silence. But when... Um, I don't think he's the Pope, but... Um, the priest, he's a priest, I think. The priest character um, tries to speak out because um, the King John's about to have somebody killed, but then he gets his tongue cut off, and then, you know, the, the priest character dies of his wounds, which then causes the... The moment when Thomas breaks his vow of silence is pretty badass. Like, there's a lot of badass moments. Um, it is a bit hard-hitting. Um, like I said, only real negative. I don't really think I have any, like... I guess if I wanted to be, like, technical, like, some of the CGI, like, not CGI, but, like, there were some shots, like, like, some far shots, you could tell they weren't actually there, it looked like a green screen, but it didn't bother me, like, I can get over a little shit like that, this movie probably didn't have, like, a giant budget, um, you know, so it's one of those things, I can, if the movie itself still has, like, more better story, I can get over, like, not the greatest CGI, I mean, so... I mean, I'm watching Farscape right now, and Farscape doesn't, some of the CGI is pretty bad, but it's still a great show, so I can ignore it. So, like, stuff like that, like, this movie is just so well made. I love the battle scenes, like, all, every scene where you see them siege the castle is just so good. And Tiberius is a good secondary villain, the big, um, tall guy who probably could have played Thor in, like, another timeline. Like, in terms of height, he had the look of Thor now. But, um, yeah, um, so I gotta thank Steve for recommending me this. I, I really liked it. Paul Giamatti killed it as King John. He was such a good villain. Yeah, you don't necessarily see him die. You hear about it in the epilogue. But that's fine. They still have some great final scenes. Um, the battle scenes are great. It's it's two hours, but it doesn't drag. There's a maybe a portion where it drags a little bit. But it doesn't bother me. Like, I can, I, that's why I almost didn't even acknowledge it as a drag. You know? And some really strong character performance. That, that scene, the back and forth between William when he, like, refused to, like, give up his mates and basically sacrifice himself. He gets both of his hands chopped up. That was so, and then he gets fucking launched by a trebuchet, bro. To the, that was kind of hard to watch because he, he just, like, splats on the wall. Like, they, the violence is there. And I think that, like I'm going to say it again, one thing this movie really nails is that medieval aesthetic because medieval times were very, medieval Europe was very violent. And 
The one thing I really also like, it was actually, it felt like I was watching it, like a movie in medieval Europe because, and I know I don't care how racist it sounds, there's not a random, like, black dude. Like, I said this in my Voyage of the Meter video. Like, I'm kind of tired of um, these studios when they do a medieval movie or a movie that's set in, like, medieval Europe or, you know, old Europe. Oh, we gotta throw a random black character in there. Like, why? There wouldn't, that wouldn't be there. Just, like, white guy wouldn't be in, like, ancient Africa. Or a white guy wouldn't be in feudal Japan. You know? It's just that people didn't travel around. Like, you, if you're, I'm always, for these type of movies, I'm okay if the cast is all white. Because it makes sense. It's medieval Europe. Or medieval England, specifically. Of course, it's that it's gonna be mostly white people. But like, it's just like when you watch a like martial arts movie, especially one that's set in like feudal Japan or ancient China, they're gonna be all you know, in ancient China's case, they're gonna be all Chinese. You're not gonna see another race. That's just how it was, especially in ancient. You know, it actually was accurate, and that's why like it's this movie's gonna last the stand the test of time. It's not Gladiator, but I do think it's really good. And I got to thank Steve for putting me on to this. This is definitely going to be one I'm going to put on from now on. This movie was fucking awesome. So, But other than that, um, tomorrow I'll be reviewing Dead Snow. It's another movie Steve recommended me. Figure, you figure why not review it now since we're getting closer to Christmas. You know, it's not a Christmas movie, but it's set in the snow. So it's the right time. So I'll be doing one and two. So tomorrow I'll be doing one and then doing two on Thursday. So that's the plan for the next few days. But other than that, um, let's get into the movie. Amati in some other movie is kind of plays itself, which it's not necessarily a negative. But in this movie, he actually like <coughs> I didn't feel like I was like, oh, this is just Paul G. Amati. Like, no, he <coughs> he felt like King John. Like he really nailed it in his performance. Like he was hateable. You know, he was fucking hateable. <coughs> So we get a backstory about like how the Magna Carta happened and how John Ree, you know, basically gets himself back into power by making a deal with Tiberius, and then we have a <coughs> jump and how the Magna Carta was rescinded. And this is where we meet um, Thomas and his group of um, Knights Templar arriving, uh, meeting a place to stay overnight. So they're they are allowed to stay overnight at this castle. Um, but King John has one of his people kill, kill and hang a guy because he basically did a, a slight. Um, you know, because King John rules with an iron fist. And I, I, I love, I do love stories like that, you know. And I know this is somewhat based off of King John's like an actual person. But it, I do love like Iron Fist stories, like where you have like a dictator or you have some kind of leader, you know, who's like a dictator. I, I love stories like that. So he's about to have somebody executed, and the priest character who introduced him to the Templar, who mentions to mentions that they're all have a sworn of silence, so you don't hear them talk for a bit. And I gotta give it. To Give him credit. Um, um, really give him credit for that. Like, they really... Um, like, Thomas stuck to being silent for, like, the first at least 30 minutes of the movie. About 30... 20 to 30 minutes, like, around there. Like, that, even just for that bit, is probably pretty hard to do. You gotta just stay, like, not saying anything for a while and have it look believable. Not look like you're just trying to not say anything, you know? So, um, then the king just, he, Paul Giamatti, he's just so savage in this movie. Like, he has one of his, he has his men, 
grab of the priest who tried to speak out about the guy being executed. He tried to stop it. King John has him grabbed, and then they literally cut his tongue. And you see it happen. They don't, like, cut away. Or they kind of cut back and forth with, like, Thomas and his men watching it happen. But that you still see it happen. It's crazy. Like, you, they don't shy. I'm going to say it again. They don't shy away from the violence in this movie. So, yeah, we got a big battle scene. Um, the Templar takes out a lot of John's men. And they manage to evacuate. Unfortunately, the priest dies um, from his wounds, you know, from bleeding out. So, and this is where Thomas breaks his vow of silence. And this is where we meet um, Charles Dance. Charles Dance is so good in this movie. He's not in it a lot, but he is so good. I mean, he's one of those actors that just, he's, he's a great character actor. Like, I mean, I, I know a lot of people more know him from Game of Thrones, but I mean, I know him from like Last Action Hero. Um, even um, the Golden Child. I, I just think he's just such a good character actor. So, um, and also, well, this is also where we meet William, Brian Cox's character, um, and they have trying to figure out, because he's the the guy who signed the Magna Carta originally. Um, and I do love how much of a history lesson this movie is, but it's not boring. It doesn't, like, the dialogue scenes are compelling enough. And I've always said, I'm not one of those, I need action every five minutes, you know? If you can make the dialogue compelling enough that I, I can get into your movie or show, whatever, you know? And I think they did a good job with that in this. You don't, you're not bored. Like I said, there's maybe, like, that first 30 minutes is a little slow, but it gets going really once you... And it's not slow to the point where it bothers me. I can, I get it, you gotta build it up a little bit. But, man, yeah. So this is where William puts basically a team together. Um, he goes back to his town. I love even that opening that when he, they get there and you see, um, I don't remember the character's name, but he's basically kind of his squire who's um, in that thing where, they, you know, that uh, contraption where he's imprisoned. And basically they're all, like, throwing um, the town's, like, villages throwing, like, like fruit and everything at him. So basically he's being punished, essentially. Um, and then yeah, so basically this is kind of the point of the movie where Thomas is putting together a team to take out, take on uh, King uh, John and his people. And I love King John. The moments where they cut to King John talking to Tiberius. Tiberius is a good secondary villain. He, he's not your main, he's not the main but he's a good secondary villain of the movie. And man, when you do see him in the fights, he like is a, a force. Like the one guy tries to take him on and he just kills him like immediately. Like it wasn't even like, there was no chance. It's, this is a bit later in the movie, but yeah. So, um, so they meet, um, they start putting together the team. And I love the back and forth, like I said, with Tiberius and um, King John. Um, like, Tiberius almost, like, is there to warn him. Like, it kind of reminds me of... Uh, it, it's a more recent example, but, you know, in John Wick 4, Marquise's character and Clancy Brown, who's just kind of there to check him. Like, don't get too much into your ego. And, like, there's a lot of that. And, and I really think... I love that kind of relationship where even, like, someone's... Ser not servant but like even you know someone who works with him is even like hey you're getting too old you know over you, you know over yourself and all that and like i said the the world granted i know this is like real life but like, you know the world building this movie does i think it's really well done um then we get our first uh big battle um where they kings john's men first try to attack um Rochester Castle and it doesn't go well like they basically 20 dudes managed to take out a bunch of guys. this is the scene where I was talking about where you had fucking Williams like just slice a dude's head in you're seeing like heads get chopped off the the choreography is also very well done I actually think for like probably a smaller budget movie I enjoy the choreography like the sword choreography especially from Thomas like the moment he like he felt like he was just like oh he he didn't he pulled off those I don't know if that's an, it's him doing it or if that's like a stuntman who's actually using the sword, 
But if it's if that's like actually him, that's impressive. And yeah, like, and I love like the the camaraderie, the um, Thomas's men form. Like, he even have like a younger member who, you know, when he gets his first kill, like he, it's believable. Like, you know, because he gets bailed out by Thomas, and Thomas says, "No, you need to fight. You need to be able to defend yourself." And then, then that moment comes, and he kills the guy. So after taking out a lot of John's men, John's men evacuate. And then we get another attack. So there's like big three big battles basically. And there's like little skirmishes in between those, but mainly the three big battles where they attack for three times. Second time it doesn't work, and then the third time, that's where we get William's death. And throughout the film, you see Thomas fall in love with Kate Mara's character, who I thought she was pretty good, um, as like the love interest. And it's one of those things. She's a strong female character, but she's not like she has to physically fight. That's just because of the time. Women weren't physically fighting like that. That was a rarity when it, that happened. And I think that's just what Hollywood, like, is this obsession. Like, they think every the only way to be a strong woman is you have to be able to fight. And, no, some characters are good. Like, not... I kind of like the variety where, yeah, like, her, she was smart. She tried to, you know, she was tendering you know tendering to all the men you know all the injured men when they got hurt you know like they played into her strengths which makes sense it would be you know nursing because that's what women did back then you know they didn't fucking fight there, there were some obviously Joan of Arc but you know it, it just was rare though um so basically it escalates into war um, and then, yeah, William gets captured, and yeah, his death is so tragic, man. You feel bad for him, but he goes out like a badass, though. Like, he goes out, like, in, in, like, in, like, he doesn't go out like a bitch. He just goes out talking shit to, to the king, and how he's not a real king, and all that, you know, like, just the back and forth between the two is so good. You know, he kills, um, two of his men, and then... Yet he does the same thing to him, like chops his hands off, and then the king basically says, "If you all basically threatens to, to kill him if they don't come out," and yeah, he ends up killing um, William. He goes out pretty sad, man. He gets launched by a trebuchet and just tipped to a wall, and it's just it pretty much instantly he dies. Like <clears throat> there's no surviving that. Getting launched at that forest to a concrete wall. Yeah, it, it's over. Um, so, like, this is, like, the moment where the heroes feel defeated. So, it's a well-paced movie of a hero's journey with Thomas's arc. You know, and his whole story, like, basically wanting to get vengeance. Somewhat. Like, that's one of it. You know, one of them. Like, he wants to get vengeance for what they did, what King John did. You know, obviously what he's doing throughout the film. Then King John's people attack, so you have like a final stand. Um, Tiberius ends up getting killed. Um, the French and um, basically reinforcements show up and help Thomas and the people defending the Rochester Castle and chase off John's men. And then we get an epilogue, and then um, a new king is made. And. Um, Thomas rides off uh, with Kate Mara, and um, we get an epilogue about we find out that King John dies, basically of embarrassment. And I, I love like the storytelling in this movie, but the back and forth with um, that's probably the highlight of the movie for me is the back and forth with King John and William. William goes out like a G. He didn't. He didn't like. He didn't go out like a bitch, <laughs> you know. So, it was like, yeah. So, anyway. This movie is an 8 out of 10. I love it. Um, I gotta thank Steve for putting me on this again once again. It was, this one should have been big. Charles Dance. I think it's a really good, oh, you know, um, period piece. You know, you, you felt like in your medieval England. It wasn't just like, Oh, this is just a modern movie just with the mid mid medieval aesthetic. Like they actually tried and made you feel it.
Thomas is a good character. You have pretty something. Thomas's whole like knights team was like good characters, and you all you felt bad for them when they eventually died. Like Tiberius was a sad one of the sec secondary villains. He killed a couple of them. It was pretty brutal. Like, I'm gonna say it, that actor in another timeline could have been Thor. Like he actually looks like Thor from the comics. Like he's pretty tall, he has long blonde locks. Um, but yeah, and. The IP of the movie in terms of performance is, is Paul Giamatti. Especially in a lot of movies, he kind of plays himself, which the movies that where he plays himself, it, it makes sense. But I like that he actually, he became a character. He wasn't just playing himself. He was, he was genuinely really good in this. this like that scene, but just even this other scenes, like he, you wanted him to die. Granted, you know, it, but it, it's a movie, so of course they're gonna. I mean, there's a little bit of um, Hollywood, you know, changing there, because at the end of the day, period pieces aren't gonna always be accurate, even though it's based off a real thing. But I think they, for the most part, um, capture that era. And I just Paul Giamatti was such a good, was so good as King John. So it makes sense why they didn't show him die. Like this isn't like because. This is he's based off a real person, so they're gonna probably try to have him die like how he died in history. So you can't just have him get killed by the main hero just because that's how a normal movie would. So, but anyway, I think it was a, this is a great movie. Thanks again, Steve, for putting me on this. This is this was awesome. Um, I'm gonna watch Dead Snow tomorrow, so that I have a feeling that'll be really good. He's been putting me on some really good shit, so why not keep going? Um, so tomorrow, like I said, tomorrow and. Thursday, I'll be doing Dead Snow 1 and 2. Friday will be Evil Bong. Saturday will be the Screen Ran is Gay Part 14. I found an article. So I'll be doing that Saturday. And then Sunday, I'll figure something out what we're going to do on Sunday. Um, but yeah, but other than that, um, I am going to peace out here. Thank <laughs> you.